जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द आई डिफेक्ट्स एंड आल्सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द न्यूमेरिकल्स बेस्ड ऑन आई डिफेक्ट्स राइट पर्टिकुलरली माइलोपिया एंड हाइपरमेट्रोपिया सो दैट टॉपिक वाज डन टुडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक एंड इट कंसर्न्स अ स्प्लिटिंग अप ऑफ व्हाइट लाइट इनटू इट्स सेवन कंस्टिट्यूएंट कलर्स दैट यू आर ऑलरेडी अवेयर ऑफ इट्स एक्चुअली नोन एज dispersion of white light so today we will be touching on this particular topic right and before we start with the actual topic of dispersion we need to be aware of a prism how to define a prism right now when light is incident on a prism then how it refracts right we will try to recollect all the rules for refraction of light and then eventually we will discuss that when white light is incident on one face of a prism then light after emerging from the other face of the prism tends to split up into its seven constituent colors and that is what dispersion of white light is all about right so let's start with this very very interesting session so we'll first start with prism so there are various types of prisms a prism can have a square base it can have a triangular base so let us consider this particular prism suppose this is a prism having a square base maybe like this so basically this is the base of the prism and this is the angle of the prism this is the angle of the prism right and these are the two refracting faces so how to define a prism a prism is a transparent refracting medium which is bonded by two refracting surfaces which meet each other along a straight line known as the refracting edge so these are the two these are the two one and two these are the two refracting surfaces these are the two refracting surfaces and this straight line along which these two refracting surfaces meet that is known as a refracting edge it is known as a refracting edge and so it's this angle which this refracting surfaces makes with each other it is known as the angle of prism it can be represented by capital letter a so this a stands for angle of prism it stands for angle of prism right and obviously this is the base so prism is a transparent refracting medium which is composed of two refracting plane surfaces meeting each other along a straight line which is known as the refracting edge and the angle which the two refracting surfaces makes with each other that is known as the angle of prism so this is how a prism can be defined right now let's draw a ray diagram and see what happens when a ray is incident on one of the refracting faces of the prism right so while drawing the ray diagram we need to draw only the front face right only the front face of this prism right so let's concentrate over here this is suppose the prism this is let us consider the base of the prism obviously it's made up of glass and it's kept in air so it will act as a denser medium it will act as a denser medium this is air this is also air or vacuum so obviously it will act as a rarer medium it will act as a rarer medium and this is the angle of prism this is capital letter a a stands for the angle of prism right let us consider this to be the point where the ray of light is to be incident so students any but just remember whether you want to study reflection or refraction while drawing ray diagram at the point first draw a normal right that is absolutely mandatory so let's draw the normal first normal means an imaginary line which is perpendicular to the surface this is the normal 
it has to be drawn by dotted lines. This is the normal. Normal means an imaginary line which is perpendicular to the surface. These are the two refracting surfaces. This is the second one, this is the first one. Suppose light is incident like this. This is the incident ray. Let us consider this to be the incident ray. Now we are aware. The angle which the incident ray makes with the normal that is known as angle of incidence. We are already aware of it. So this is the incident ray and this is the angle which the incident ray makes with the normal. So this is known as angle of incidence. Now students at this particular point, suppose it is point M. At this point what happens is the ray of light travels from rarer to denser medium. So we have already studied a ray of light or rather light while traveling from one medium to another medium there appears a change in its velocity. Also there appears a bending of light. The path of the light get changed and that is known as refraction. So here light is traveling from rarer to denser. So it will bend towards the normal, isn't it? So it will be like this. It will bend towards the normal. This one is the refracted ray. This is refracted ray. And as you are aware, the angle which this refracted ray makes with the normal, this is the normal, it is known as angle of refraction. This is angle of refraction. And uh, represented it by R. Suppose it is R1. Let us consider it to be R1. <coughs> At this point, the ray of light will again suffer refraction. Why? Because this ray of light now will travel from denser to rarer medium. And as per the rule, when the ray of light travels from denser to rarer medium, it will tend to bend away from the normal. Right? Again, before we draw the ray diagram or the emergent ray, we need to draw normal over here. Right? So let's draw the normal. It has to be drawn with the help of dotted lines. This is the normal. This is 90 degree. This is another normal. So this angle, suppose we represent it by R2. Let us consider this angle to be represented by R2. Right? So at this point, suppose this is point N. The ray is traveling from denser to rarer. So it will bend away from the normal. This is the normal. It will bend away from the normal. This is it. This ray emerging out from the other refracting face of the prism is known as the emergent ray. It is known as the emergent ray. And the angle which this emergent ray makes with the normal is known as the angle of emergence. Clear students? So, a ray of light while passing through a prism, it suffers refraction twice on each of the two refracting surfaces. At point M, since it is traveling from rarer to denser, it will bend towards the normal. And at point N, the light is traveling from denser to rarer, so it will bend away from the normal. Right? The angle which the incident ray makes with the normal, that is known as the angle of incidence. The angle which the emergent ray makes with the normal, that is known as angle of emergence. That is given by small letter E. And this is the angle of prism. I hope you have understood this ray diagram, right? This is the incident ray, this is the refracted ray, and this is the emergent ray. So, light is suffering change in its path twice while passing through the prism. Clear students? So now let's discuss some technical terms. Like we'll discuss the angle of deviation. Then I'll also tell a relationship between angle of deviation, angle of prism, angle of incidence, and angle of emergence which we can experimentally verify with the help of uh, paper pens and wooden plank with A4 size sheet. It can be easily done. Right? Let's discuss uh, those topics then. Okay, I'll draw another ray diagram so as to explain the concept of angle of deviation. Students, I will advise you to practice this ray diagram. Right? You need to practice. Okay. Again, I draw this ray diagram. This is the prism. This is suppose the prism. This is the base. This will be the angle of prism. Right? Suppose at this point we need to study 
the refraction. So we need to draw a normal over here. So this is the incident ray. This is the incident ray. The angle which the incident ray makes with the normal that is known as angle of incidence. Now students so look. If the prism were absent, if the prism is not present, then as per the rectilinear propagation of light, light would have travelled along the same straight path. Right? In a given medium, light always follows a straight path, isn't it? So in the absence of this prism, light would have travelled along this path. That is straight path. So it is incidentally when produced. So this is basically incident ray when produced. So in case the prism were not here, then the light would have travelled along the same straight path, isn't it? But since the prism is here, so at point M it will suffer refraction and it is starting to rarer to denser. It's a glass. So obviously it's a denser medium. So light is starting to rarer to denser. So it will bend towards the normal. So angle of refraction in the denser medium would be less than the angle of incidence in the rarer medium. Right? So it will be like this. This is the refracted ray and this will be the angle of refraction over here. Let us consider it to be R1. And at this point again, it won't go straight because it is traveling from rarer, denser medium to rarer medium. So again its path will get changed. So again draw this uh, normal over here. This is the normal. Dotted line indicates the normal. So suppose this is the normal. Normal is any imaginary line which is perpendicular to the given surface. This is suppose the normal. So this angle, it can be represented by R2. This angle at point here is R1. This is R2 at point N. Now what happens is, this ray is travelling from denser to rarer. It will bend away from the normal. So as I stated, this is the emergent ray. And the angle which this emergent ray makes with the normal, that is known as angle of emergence. Right? So, in case the prism was absent, then the light would have travelled along the same straight path. This is the incident ray when produced. But because of this prism, light instead of following this path, it is following this path. Isn't it? So, what you do is, this is the emergent ray. This is the emergent ray. So, if you produce it in the backward direction, then the angle which the emergent ray makes to the incident ray when produced, this angle, it is known as the angle of deviation. This is known as angle of deviation, represented by del. This is the symbol which is known as del. It is used to represent the angle of deviation. This is the angle through which light gets deviated when it is made to pass through a prism. Clear students? So again I repeat, if the prism is considered to be absent, then the light would have travelled along this path, same straight path as per the rectilinear propagation of the light. But because of this prism, the light will suffer refraction at point M and N. Right? So as a result, this is the actual path followed by the light. I will represent it by bold light. This is the incident ray. This is the refracted ray. This is the refracted ray. And this is the emergent ray. This is the emergent ray. Right, students? So, this is the actual path followed by the light in the presence of prism. So, at these two points, points M and N, the bending of light is taken. So, in the presence of this prism, light instead of following this path, it is emerging out of the other face of the prism along this direction. So, its path is getting deviated. So, this is the emergent ray. This is the actual path which the light follows after emerging out from the prism. So, if you produce it in the backward direction, and this was the original direction of the incident ray, isn't it? So, the angle which it makes, that is known as angle of deviation. So, students, tell is the angle of deviation. It is known as del. It is the angle of this is known as the angle of deviation. 
the angle through which the light gets deviated while it is made to pass through a prism. So how to define angle of deviation? Angle of deviation may be defined as the angle which the emergent ray makes with the incident ray when it is produced. This is the emergent ray and this is the incident ray when produced. So it is the angle which the emergent ray makes with the incident ray when it is produced. So that is known as angle of deviation. Clear students? And it is found that the angle of deviation increases with the increase in the refractive index. Right? So angle of deviation increases with the increase in the refractive index of the medium for a given wavelength or for a given color. So there is a key point, just remember this. There is a mathematical derivation for it, right? So here we will consider the theoretical aspect only. And one more thing to it, right? There is a relationship between A, A is the angle of prism, I is the angle of incidence, E is the angle of emergence, and del is the angle of deviation, right? There is a particular relationship between these four. So the relationship is A plus del is always equal to I plus E. So again there is a mathematical verification for this as well as you can verify it experimentally in your respective labs. Right? You only require is a glass prism, paper pens, a piece of paper, A4 size paper and a wooden plank. And that would be sufficient so as to verify this particular formula. Clear? So the relationship is the sum of the angle of prism and the angle of deviation is equal to the sum of the angle of incidence and the angle of emergence. So A plus del is always equal to I plus E. So particularly in MCQs or any other exams, if out of these four, any three are given, then the value of the fourth one can be easily determined using this particular formula. Clear students? So that's the relationship between angle of prism, angle of deviation, angle of incidence and angle of emergence. Right? Well, now what we do is, we'll discuss the factors on which the angle of deviation depends. Right? We'll consider a case of particular wavelength. And students, if you remember, we have discussed that the refractive index, refractive index, I have denoted it by mu. This is mu. So, it depends upon the refractive index. It is A plus B by lambda square plus C by lambda 4. A, B and C, these are constants. These are constants. So, basically, this is considered a monochromatic light. Right? Monochromatic means having single wavelength. So, for red color, the wavelength is different. Accordingly, the same glass will have different refractive index for different colors. For red light, the prism will offer a particular value of refractive index. For blue light or for orange or for violet color, the same prism, same material of the prism will have different refractive index for that particular color. So what I mean to say is that, we have earlier also we have discussed it, the refractive index of a medium depends upon the wavelength. For different colors or different wavelengths, the refractive index of a given material is different. As per this relationship, it is also known as Cauchy's relationship. It is known as Cauchy's relation. So what I mean to say is that we are aware of the visible spectrum. It is the pure, right? So it is arranged in a particular sequential manner. The wavelength of red color is maximum, while that of violet color is minimum. It's arranged in this particular manner. The pure, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. It is the visible spectrum. It is the only part of the spectrum that is visible to us. Clear students? So red color, it poses maximum wavelength. Violet, it poses minimum wavelength. 
So different colors have got different wavelength and therefore different wavelength means different refractive index being offered by the same material of the glass prism. Clear students? So here, since lambda r is greater than lambda b, r is red, b is violet. Right? It's pretty clear. Therefore, it's inversely proportional actually with the increase in lambda, mu will decrease. Therefore, refractive index for red would be less than refractive index for violet. Clear? Therefore, this glass prism will offer large refractive index for violet color and will offer minimum refractive index for red color. Which further implies that, look, angular deviation as stated, it increases with the increase in the refractive index. So, refractive index for violet color is maximum. Therefore, angular deviation for violet color will be maximum, while angular deviation for the red color would be minimum. Clear students? This is the reason why different colors while passing through the same prism will get deviated through different amounts. And which color will suffer maximum deviation? It is the violet color which will suffer maximum deviation. And students, which color will suffer minimum deviation? Red color will suffer minimum deviation. Right? So, when white light which is composed of seven constituent colors is made to pass or is incident on one refracting phase of prism then what happens is uh, due to the different wavelengths of its constituent colors what happens is different colors, different wavelengths get refracted or deviated through different amounts as a result of which the white color gets split up into its seven constituent colors all colors suffering different deviations violet color suffering maximum deviation Red color suffering minimum deviation. So this splitting of white light into its seven constituent colors when it is made to pass through a prism is known as dispersion of light. Right? Let me explain this phenomena with the help of this particular diagram. So again, this ray diagram which I am going to draw now is very very important. So do practice. Also, be very carefully, students, right? So, this is the prism. Consider a small angular prism. Means the value of A is small. This is the prism. It will act as a tensor medium, obviously. This is the base. As I told you, these are the two refracting surfaces. This is the base. This is known as the angular prism, right? So, white light is incident over it. This is the white light. I am indicating it with the help of bold line because of the fact that it is composed of seven constituent colors. So let us consider this to be white light. So white light is incident on one face, refracting face of the prism. So here what happens is it will get refracted, its path will get deviated. So here itself it gets split up into its seven constituent colors. So this is first one, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. And here again, rays travel from denser to rarer. So it will bend away from the normal. So ray of light while emerging out of the second refracting phase of the prism will tend to bend away from the normal. So, this is it. So, the bending of light will take place twice. One at this particular point and the other at this particular point. Right? So, it should be like this. You need to show the bending of light. This is it. If a screen is placed over here, suppose a screen is placed over here. So, this will be the violet color. This will be indigo, this will be blue, this will be green, this will be yellow, this will be orange and this one will be red. So what we get is, suppose this is a screen. So a band of colors will be obtained on a screen. This band of colors is known as the spectrum. It is known as the spectrum or the visible spectrum. 
it is known as the visible spectrum. And this phenomena of splitting up a white light into its seven constituent colors when it is made to pass through a prism is known as dispersion of light. Students, it is only because of this phenomena that we are able to see a very beautiful natural phenomena uh, which is known as rainbow. Rainbow can be seen during light drizzle or immediately after rain. We will discuss that topic in the next lecture, right? So that's one of the application of dispersion of light. So students, I hope you have understood the uh, ray diagram, isn't it? And most importantly, here in the previous, just before this ray diagram, we have discussed mathematically that violet color suffers maximum deviation and red color suffers minimum deviation. So that is to be represented in the diagram. So this is the incident ray when produced. If the prism were absent, then white light would have traveled along this path. This is the incident ray when produced. In case the prism were absent, then the light would have traveled along this path, straight path, right? So now, red color. This is the actual path covered by the red light. So if you produce it in the backward direction, this will be the deviation suffered by the red color. This is the deviation suffered by the red color. And if you produce the violet light in the backward direction like this. So this angle, it is the deviation suffered by the violet color. So students, in the diagram also you need to represent that violet color suffers maximum deviation while red color suffers minimum deviation. So del B is greater than del R. So that is why the sequence of color would be with pure in the reverse order. Is it clear, students? So this is the ray diagram. Del B and del R are the deviations suffered by the violet color and the deviations suffered by the red color respectively. So students, I hope you have enjoyed this session. You have understood this very, very interesting concept. In the next lecture, we will try to discuss some applications of dispersion of light. Right? Till then, do practice drawing these ray diagrams and uh, do study very well. Thank you, students.